earlier you said that Lebanon doesn't have any regulatory framework at the moment. What is the current position for cryptocurrencies in Lebanon? And given its importance, do you think there is going to be a regulatory framework developed and established in the near term? So right now, uh, the Central Bank of Lebanon has, you know, sent out uh, a kind of, you know, letters or whatever announcement saying, you know, it's it's not good to deal in crypto and crypto is not supported. And if you get in trouble using crypto, you know, we can't, we won't be there to like help you because it's not uh, legalized. But yet there, there, so there, no, there's no regulation, but there's no sem- something that says, you know, you're totally not allowed to use crypto. Okay, so this is there's this gray area where people kind of are meshing about. So, um, for example, you can't have a crypto exchange in Lebanon, right? But uh, but a lot of Lebanese use the crypto exchanges that are international, so they just put in their passport or driving license, and they can you know uh, use them. Um, and you go to any OTC market, and and you'll see a Bitcoin shop, right? You know that, or you'll see a a, t- a phone shop. And they'll say, you know, we exchange USDT or we exchange Bitcoin and, and no one comes near them. All right. And even when there was this big debacle about uh, Bitcoin mining, because, you know, in a certain area in Lebanon, uh, Bitcoin miners were using the hydroelectric power for uh, and they were taking in more electricity than, you know, they were supposed to. When when the police came uh, to their places, right. They couldn't actually do anything for those that were actually paying for that electricity because Bitcoin, Bitcoin mining or any crypto mining is not, you know, uh, is neither banned nor legalized. I'm sorry, the electricity just left. So, uh, so no it's problem. still, so it's still a, it's a, it's a gray area, and because it's such a gray area, anything goes, right? Given, I do. Yeah. Go, go ahead. So coming to your second question, should it be regulated uh, given what's going on? In all honesty, John, I think that they should have embraced it and not just regulated it, but actually uh, embraced it totally. I think that they could have used uh, blockchain and tokenization to solve a lot of their financial problems, the government. I mean, the government has $18 billion of gold sitting in a vault in, in the central bank, right? I mean, if they had tokenized that gold and had it traded on secondary exchanges, they could have actually brought in a lot of money. For example, if they had allowed for crypto to flourish uh, and to be used as, you know, uh, like in other countries, it, it might have, you know, even helped the economy uh, uh, get better, right? Because right now crypto is like used in the, in the secondary economy. You can't tell how much crypto is coming in or how much crypto is going out or anything. So I, could, I think they could have used that to, to like bolster the economy uh, and to help people get paid and to help goods and services uh, be, be carried out within, with crypto. But we'll see. Maybe it could be used as a legal tender even. I don't know. That segues nicely into my next question. Does it seem reasonably possible to you that the Lebanese government would adopt a decentralized cryptocurrency like Bitcoin to be legal tender, either in tandem with the Lebanese lira or replace the Lebanese lira entirely? I think that, I mean, I'm a big believer that the future is not in a fiat government, government controlled currencies, okay? The whole world has moved to a digital world. And people are more connected than ever. And what connects them is not, you know, their nationalities or their geographies. It's their communities, what they're, what's, what they, what they, what brings them together, what they like, et cetera. And when you have that, what follows usually is a unified kind of currency. So Lebanon is not far from the rest of the world. Okay. And, and in the future, the, the children and the youth of tomorrow don't want to go to a bank. They don't care if it's they hold Lebanese lira or U.S. dollars or whatever. They want a currency that they can use, you know, and digitally pay on from a wallet. Um, 
they have they have more confidence in themselves so they feel more confident in in doing their own investments and giving loans to you know to the to the companies and entities that they want to give in and so forth so i think it's not just lebanon but i think you know a lot of other countries will eventually follow suit and incorporate crypto into um into the way they do you know the, how they pay and everything you see a lot of governments going into CBDCs, and that's one way of, of showing people that look, governments have started to understand that there is a movement towards, you know, digital uh, currencies. Um, look at Ecuador, for example. You know, he's still buying Bitcoin, and he's all into it. I, I yes, yes, I I think that it would help. I think it would even, uh, you know give more freedom and uh, to, to the Lebanese and to other countries. Thanks for tuning in. If you enjoyed the video, hit that like and subscribe button and turn on notifications to stay up to date with us. We also produce a weekly newspaper packed with the latest Web3 news from emerging markets. The link to get access is in the description below. And if you really like the video, share it with your friends and leave a comment. We'd love to hear from you. Thanks for supporting the channel.